Hey everyone, it's Technic Builder. I wanted to make a video about shunting this resettable fuse and then just a simple soldering video uh, for soldering fresh battery pack leads onto the back of this PCB. So, in a previous video, I cut apart a battery pack, which makes this little circuit board easy to slide out. And um, you'll see on the right side, that's a resettable fuse. That's what we're gonna shunt, and I'm just lazy. I just did it with solder. And um, I tried to pull the thing off, but I really haven't worked much with, I don't know what you call those, uh, integrated circuit components, the, basically the flat ones. Um, I tried to pull it off and I ended up just, it seemed to kind of melt and stay there. So I just shunted it by adding additional solder. And of course the electricity is gonna take the path of least resistance and bypass that resettable fuse. So my soldering iron should be warmed up by now. Um, we just flip this over and you'll notice that the positive is on the top right side of the PCB. So we're going to solder these off and then just put our new leads on. And by the way, I've got a battery missing out of this battery pack because if you were to accidentally short these during this process, um, that would be bad. So I'm gonna weight this down. I used to have a much nicer working bench. You can see I'm working on a business card uh, from the Lego store. Uh, I don't think I'll be calling them again anytime soon because they won't let me pull parts from the back of the store anymore, which makes me sad. So we're just gonna heat that up until it flows and we're gonna pull this off. By the way, this isn't, oh, well, <laughs> my sheath came off. Oh, come on, really? I can do better than that. This isn't a uh, Heiko iron because my cat um, chewed through my cord. So this is a replacement iron and it doesn't work quite as well. Uh, plus it's also a finer tip. So, you know, a finer tip is gonna have less thermal energy stored in it. It'll still get to the same temperature, but it doesn't have as much thermal capacity. All right, so I don't like how this is weighted down. It's too, it's moving around too much. I do have a um, clip thingy to hold this, but I was just trying to do a quick job. Yeah, if you're, if you're trying to learn how to solder, don't learn from me, there are other people who are way better at it than I am. Let's see what that does. That seems a bit more stable. <clears throat> and I apologize for the shadow. It's just, I don't have any additional video lights. Uh, I think you all can still see. So you could pretend this, and maybe I will. I'll put a little bit of solder. Or I'll heat up the wire a little bit. It doesn't take long. I'll get a dab of solder on the iron. Let's try not to attach that to my table. Actually, this is off camera. You can't see any of this anyway, which actually that's bad for making a video. So let me go back <laughs> onto the camera. We'll get a little bit of solder on there. Good enough. I mean, these are thin wires. This is very simple to do. Well, let me think. Now let's do some left-handed soldering. Heat this back up, push that in there, and there we go, that's attached. You know, I don't even know if I really need to tend this other one. Um, doop. Let's get that a little more in there. All right, and that's attached, and let's look closely just to make sure that those are not shorted across that bridge. They don't seem to be, I don't see any evidence. I'm gonna clean my tip off, apply a little bit of solder, put it in the holder, and then turn it off. Now, um, we just soldered this on, and what I'm gonna do is zoom out a bit, take that off manual focus so we can actually see what's happening. Let's put this back into the holder, I'll take this out again 
um, when I go and shunt the resistor. But what I wanted to show you is the performance of <clears throat> this battery pack uh, before the, res the resistor is shunted. Um, oh, yep, got to pay attention to where my wires go. That's still in there. That, I think that's still in there. We'll know once I flick the switch, and then we'll see if the LED lights up, or if the wires start heating up really quickly. <laughs> then I know that I did a bad soldering job, and um, I'll have to redo it. Let's put the battery in. Hey, lights, lights up in both directions. Good deal. Okay, so what I have here, two RC motors hooked up to a wheel. Um, and I am going to show you the effects of the resettable fuse um, with a very heavy load. So I've made another video with the XL motors, but um, well, anyway, just, just watch. So I start applying a load and eventually, boom, there, it stopped. Now, I can start it rolling again usually. Normally it'll start going again. Okay, maybe not in this case, so I'm going to turn it off for a second. And when I turn it back on, it works again. Okay. Boom, and it stopped. Now, um, I could go and do more soldering. You know what? I think I will. I think I'll keep this as one continuous video. It'll be longer than 10 minutes, but who cares? Somebody says you should always flip the switch to the left position as you push these apart because that prevents damage to that switch. I don't know, I haven't broken a switch yet, but um, somebody said that was a good idea. I'm gonna take the battery out again, and we're gonna pop this PCB off of its little holder, and now we're gonna short this fuse. So I'm going to, well actually now that it's sitting on its now that it's sitting flat, I should just be able to short this. If I zoom in, I think that's still in focus. Let's get focus right. Mm, this camera doesn't focus close. There we go. Oh, come on. One more time. Come on, camera. Well, you know what? It'll focus when I... Uh, yeah, whatever. I think you can still see. All right. I gotta turn my iron back on because I turned it off. So all I'm gonna do is a really crappy job and I'm gonna put solder from this point to this point. And again, the electricity is gonna take the path of least resistance and it's gonna bypass that fuse. Okay, my iron's getting warm. Uh, one general rule about solder is they say solder will flow where solder has been. So there's already a little bit of solder there and there. Um, so really I'm just going to start heating up this whole area. Hopefully I won't melt my solder on the back of the board. I don't think I will. <clears throat> so it's a big ugly glob. The solder doesn't, you know, really want to... Uh, go exactly where I want it to, but as long as I don't make too big of a glob, as long as I can bridge that gap, I think I'm close. Then electricity will flow up. I think I got it. Okay. I think that'll do it. That's a big glob. Maybe I can take a little bit off. Maybe the tip can pick up a little bit. Clean that off. I didn't just screw it up, did I? No, okay. All right. So, now, you just saw <laughs> the performance of this um, without that fuse shunted. Let me pop this back in the thing, and my solder didn't melt on the back. That should be cooled down by now. If these were larger electronics, I need to wait a little bit longer for that to cool down. Actually, let's not twist those wires. Make sure you can actually see what I'm doing. 
because if making a video, you should <laughs> be able to see what I'm doing. <clears throat> Snap this back together. Do, 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 do. Does it work? Oh, yep, yeah, gotta replace my battery. Push that back together, does it? No. Yeah. Switch is a little stiffer. I think that glob that I have on there is a bit large. So something is making the switch a bit stiffer, but you know what, it still works, and so I might clean that up in a bit, but I wanna go ahead and run this so you can see the difference. Okay, so same battery, same battery pack. We just shunted the fuse, and here's how the performance is different. So I'm applying a load, still hasn't shut off. Now these RC motors, have a, a resettable fuse of their own, but what I've found is when I have two motors running off a battery pack, that tends to not kick in. So again, you can see that was going the whole time. That did not um, want to shut off. Nothing in here feels warm. Batteries are cool, wires are cool, no big deal there. Now, one final example. If I do just run, run one motor, uh, now the batteries can give that one motor a few more amps because again, we've taken out that resettable fuse, so there should be, in theory, no limit to the amount of amps. Uh, so if I run one motor and I apply a load to it, the motor's resettable fuse is gonna kick in a lot earlier. And maybe I can... Wow, that gets hot. <laughs> there it goes, okay. So, the motor's fuse kicked in there. And normally once it kicks in, It'll just do that. If you get it moving, it, eh, there it goes, it's starting to go. Normally it won't do that. Normally you have to turn the power completely off before that fuse will reset. One more time. Come on, there, eh, there it goes, okay. So, even though I've taken a lot of safety out of the system by getting rid of that uh, resettable fuse, oh, there we go, um, the motor still has a fuse, so I'm still not worried about burning up motors. These are fresh batteries. Uh, my voltmeter said, well, they're relatively fresh. I charged them like a month ago, but they're in loops. Uh, I think the voltmeter said uh, 10.56 volts, so... That still feels safe sending that voltage through a receiver. Um, but anyway, you can see a, a lot more performance from the motors uh, by shunting that battery pack and then running these on eight cells instead of six. Actually, I, don't I didn't have a comparison for six cells, but it's faster. There you go. Okay, that's it.